So April, one week to go. Meccano kit, kinda. Uh, we're getting there. So things going on at the moment today. We've got so much going on. I can't keep up with it. Engine doors being painted, instrument panels being rebuilt, panels going on in the wing, cockpit being rebuilt, um, hydraulics being bled, rudder pedal foot motors being installed and bled, brake units being bled, steering being bled. So much is being done today, we cannot keep up with it, but we have one week to go until our first open day and it has to be on the floor at that point. Is it gonna be ready? I think so. We've got scaffold towers. They're coming down on Wednesday, so that's the 17th. Um, so hopefully at that point, the aeroplane will be clear. The wheels are gonna be on, all being well tonight. The engine doors will be on tonight. We should then be in a position to get the aeroplane on the floor for next weekend. Saturday's the, the deadline. It has to be on the floor for then. All being well, it's gonna go okay. So let me take you through what's been going on. We'll go step by step. So, starboard undercarriage. We had quite a lot of play in the bottom half of the bogey down here. So what we had to do was get a bit creative. Uh, our friends at Vulcan to the Sky, um, they had some new bushes, new pins, uh, and a whole new axle actually. So what we had to do was take all the brake units off, take the torque links off, take the shock absorber off, um, take the front axle out, and then we actually lowered the bogey onto the floor uh, so with the new bushes, we had to machine them. Uh, so the new bush was there itself. So call it a top hat bush, uh, but it just needed machining down just a little bit. So if you can imagine you put the bush into a hole, it's compressed in there, but we had to then ream the bushes out just to make sure that the axle would fit all the way through the, the, uh, the bushes there. So now it's a nice tight, tight fit. There's no play in the bottom bogey at all, which is really good. The brakes, They've all been into the, uh, into the workshop, all been resealed, all been pressure tested, some new hoses made, hoses pressure tested, so 150% of the working pressure, everything goes back on. Um, the upper pins here, there's an upper and lower pin where the shock strut attaches. So these pins here, they've been creaking for quite a while now, so they've been quite dry. So when you tow the aircraft, you can hear it creaking a little bit, so it's nothing to worry about, but the pins were dry. They've all been out, new pins. Pins are in, so hopefully now when we let the aeroplane back down on the floor and we tow, it's no longer gonna creak, which is good. Uh, shock struts today, Paul Morris, he's been topping up the shock struts. And so you can see the separator at the back there. You've got hydraulic fluid in the top and a very, very rare fluid at the bottom called OX16. Uh, it's liquid gold, pretty much. Uh, I'm sure gold is much, much cheaper, so you have to get it made. We need to get some made. So if any, anybody out there knows where to get OX16, we're interested. So they've been topped up. So now hopefully when the aircraft goes down on Friday, Saturday next week, the aeroplane will be sat at its correct ride height. So, air brakes. Uh, you'll notice on top of the aircraft, there's two flaps either side. And on the lower, there's only one either side. Just a design feature. They just decided they needed one on the lower. So they're chain driven. Um, there's a system of gearboxes, um, drive shafts, and chains. So what happens is these posts are chain driven. So the chain drive, or the, the sprocket drives the chain, and it, the post will come out and it will go back in, all being well. Unless you get a chain snap, it has happened. So we're going through a process of each winter at the moment. We're going through changing the chains. It's belt and braces. So, you know, it's let's do things right and do it once. We don't want any more issues with air brakes. So the guys have been really, really busy doing the air brakes. So on the starboard side, on the inboard, on the uppers, uh, and obviously the only one on the lower here, the chains have actually been swapped out for new chains. While that was happening, um, the panels have all been out, the, the torque tube there has been out, the posts have been out, Every, everything there has been paint stripped, reprotected, repainted, everything lubricated, uh, the posts put back in, and as you hear, there's ratchets being turned up there at the moment, so the guys are putting the intakes, uh, or putting the air brakes back together in the intakes. Right, so the other thing we've had to do this winter is the Bombay Rams. Uh, so there's four main actuators in the Bombay. Uh, we've already had one that 
we took out because it was leaking. It's been resealed, put back in. We've had to do the other three. So they've all come out, all been serviced, all resealed, all put back in. Uh, so today we've actually had the Bombay doors uh, opening and closing, bleeding all the rams out, adjusting them to suit. So now they're now all the correct lengths. Uh, so now the bomb doors, when they open up, and when they close, they're now the correct dimension, what they should be. So number three engine above my head, that's been out. Uh, it's a slave to back in at the moment. So that's going to be reconnected this week, coming all being well over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so the primary reason we actually took the, the engine out was to do an inspection of the actual engine itself and to do an inspection of the engine bay. So there's high pressure fuel hoses on a manifold that go around the engine uh, and they're prone to age hardening and popping. That's one thing you don't want is high pressure fuel in a hot engine. So it gets quite exciting if you do. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, belt and braces again. So we've took the engine out. They've all been inspected, but they're deemed fit for purpose. Uh, we've serviced the engine, we've cleaned the engine. The jet pipe that sits up here, the whole jet pipe has been out. All the rollers have been unseized. There's a ramp at the back. Uh, there's a tie rod that had to be cut. That's been serviced. So that was, um, that was an interesting one. So we've done it before, having a jet pipe out, unscheduled, and we finished it, I think, at 1 a.m. in the morning. This time, quite happy. It came out, everything was done. It's put back in within about five hours, and we actually still made the pub. So what you see here is there's two rare examples of engineers asleep on the job. <laughs> Should we do another one? So you can see with the air brakes on this side, the inner one is the one that's been serviced because it's nice and shiny. So that has all been out, the posts have been out, like I say, the chains have been swapped. So the guys now, they've done the inspections on the internals, cleaned it all out, everything's all locked up, panels are going back in, and then we're basically up to range of movement checks. So one of the other things that we have been doing this winter, the aircraft looks tatty. Um, it's one of the things that's been in the back of our mind for a while. We want to do a repaint, but there's other work we need to do on the aircraft. So it's a bit of firefighting. Do you have a pristine looking aircraft? Do you have a workable aircraft? It's finding that balance in between. So certain areas of the wing are in paint at the moment. They've been painted, as you can see, it's super shiny. That brings us on to another thing. So out there, there's some purists and they'll say, oh, it's the wrong shade or it's shiny. It shouldn't be shiny. It should be matte. It's a bomber. It was never a shiny aircraft. The thing being is, if we were to, God forbid, lose the roof over our heads and we go outside, you need to have a waterproof aircraft. The rain runs off the aircraft so much better if it's shiny. We know it shouldn't be shiny. Bit of bony contention for some, but for aircraft longevity and everything else, it's going to be shiny for now. Not saying it is going to be shiny forever. We might go into a different scheme. It might come out with a respray and matte. We don't know, but there's plans in the future. We just don't know what's going to happen at the moment. But while we can, make it look nice, make it glint in the sun. That's the main objective at the moment. So another thing we have done as well, going off on a tangent at the moment, but we're on top of a wing. Why are we going to talk about brakes? More detailed information on brakes. We'll talk about brake foot motors. Over to Trev. Okay, so the foot motors are basically hydraulic pistons, um, which are underneath the pilot's feet. They're black uh, buttons that you see there. When the pilot pushes on those, that sends a hydraulic signal down to the brake control valve. The brake control valve looks at the pilot's pressure and then meters system pressure, which is reduced to 2,550 maximum. That pressure then goes to either the left leg or the right leg, applying loads of pistons on each brake unit, squashing the heat plates and the friction plates together therefore given the brake effect. These uh, foot motors have been getting increasingly heavy. In other words, the pilot needs to push harder and harder to stop the aircraft. So we've changed the seals in these um, and then bled the whole system. The brakes themselves have been pressure checked uh, to confirm that everything is back to the standard that the manual expects of it. So the pilots actually have two ways of stopping the aircraft. We've got the handbrake, 
which they are able to pull that and that puts proportional brakes onto both sides of the undercarriage, so left and right. The foot brake are proportional, so if you push more on the left, then more braking on the left and the aircraft will veer to the left. If you want to do a tight turn, then pushing left foot and a bit of right throttle will get the aircraft very tightly round to the left and of course vice versa to the right. Uh, so one thing, biggest project by far that has been this winter is these receptacles that are in here. That is where the canopy sits, which is down there on the floor at the moment. So these fittings, as you know, the story goes, they were absolutely rotten uh, and they pass water straight through into the instrument panels in the cockpit. Not ideal for an aeroplane, it should be staying dry. So our friends at Vulcan to the Sky, they came up absolute trumps they had two fittings they're handed so they had the left had the right um, they also had the 60 degree rivets which saved us from getting them manufactured so it was just a small question of taking all the structure out internally which you know about um, getting the fittings drilled off copy drilled bolted back in riveted back in so Trev's on the inside now, he's putting um, PRC, it's like a rubber sealant on over all the fasten heads because it's on a pressure skin. You can see out here now, the paint's on, the green's on, everything's finished on this side of it, everything's sealed up. So just picture the scene, you know, it's bare metal, there's fasteners been banged in, you have to mill the heads off the rivets. Um, you then have to seal it, you then have to paint it. It's not just a simple, just take a couple of rivets out and put a couple of rivets in. There's so much more to it. And you have to work as a team. It has to be systematic. Um, but we've now proved that and it's now back together. So the acid test will be actually fitting the canopy, make sure it all lines up. Um, hopefully that will work. So this is it, you know, this is the finished example now. So once the insulation's back in, everything's done on that side of it. Um, we should be able to say right instrument panel back in from next friday saturday uh, and we'll go from there so we go to our over to our glamorous assistant trevor this is outside and this is inside <laughs> so what we found was these here which are the hinge uh, canopy covers they uh, were heavily corroded. This is made from S514 steel, which you cannot get. Um, so we needed to take these out because we couldn't keep them in. If it goes outside and rains, water came in. Uh, all Vulcans suffer from this because that's steel. To get those out, we had to take one, two, three, four, five intercostals. This cross member, which had to be unbolted top there, as well as unbolted from the hinge covers. We had to take out this intercostal here and this one here then these covers when we got them uh, from the 558 group these holes here were not but drilled so this had to be copy drilled um, from the originals and then assembled and thankfully it all goes in nicely and then it's a case of putting it all back in with PRC which is liquid rubber that sets in situ so all the rivets that go through to the outside skin I've got PRC on them, which is both sticky, smelly, and uh, sticks to absolutely everything. You get yourself covered with it. But thankfully, it's all done now. Um, it's the last little bit of sealing, as in these bolts need to have uh, sealant on them. Um, and then it's put the insulation back and get Trev the electrician up here. So one of the other jobs we have done this winter uh, is the dreaded parachute bay. So the parachute's been out, it's been repacked, everything's all good with that side of it. So what we have done is we've actually resprayed the bay, it was looking really tatty. So everything's been rubbed down, panel wiped, thin, degreased, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's been resprayed, so it's now looking really good. So all being well on the photo, so when the parachute comes out correctly and it's slowing down, you should have a nice shiny parachute bay now as well. VRT shop, looking quite swish at the moment. So one thing we decided, the guys have been doing a fantastic job on the retail side of things. Um, 
But what we wanted to do is, it, it's our hangar, it's the first impression that you see as people walk in, is your gift shop. So we've gone away from the, the tables that we had, um, which served their purpose, they did really well. Slat walls, we've got more furniture, everything's coming in here now. So the guys have done a magnificent job over the past week. I think the shop got delivered on Monday, Tuesday this week, and here it is, all the slat walls are up. Um, so now it's gonna be a case of what do we put where, how's it gonna be sold, vice versa, whatever. But now this is gonna be the proper VRT shop and something to be really proud of. So it's not just a nice shiny aircraft out there. It's not just working on aircraft. There's guys working in the hangar during the week, stopping pigeons coming in. Um, they're painting floors, they're painting walls, they're looking after ground equipment, whatever they're doing. So they're doing a multitude of jobs down here. So it's not just the aircraft, it's loads of stuff. Please, please, please try and support us any way you can. Every donation goes to the aircraft, not one person's paid down here, one penny at all. And it is the world's only live hanging Vulcan.